Hi everyone. Hi students. Okay, oh, I can, can. Can you hear me clearly? Okay. Yes. So welcome to the second episode of our Hong Kong U program deep dive, and this is Emily from the admissions office, and I'll be the moderator today. So the Hong Kong U program deep dive is a series of three interactive dialogues with faculty members and current students. And our goal of this session is to give students information of what they can expect of the education at Hong Kong U. And in this episode, it will feature the Faculty of Science, and you will get to know the research opportunities at Hong Kong U. And today, we are very fortunate to have Dr. Gary Chan from our School of Biological Sciences, as well as Abayasit. Abayasit is our Year 3 science students from Bangladesh. And hopefully they will share with us some insights on how doing research at Hong Kong U would look like. And through the whole session, you are welcome to type your questions in the chat box or prepare your questions for our speakers. And at the end of the session, I'll be giving you some information on admissions and we will open the floor for questions and answers. And at that time, you can speak up or we will address your questions for Dr. Chan and Bayesit. And so Bayesit and Dr. Chen, thank you so much for making your time with us, with the students. So maybe let's begin with some introduction to, uh, for us, for, for us to know you better. Uh, Bayesit, will you introduce yourself to us? So hello everyone. Uh, my name is Amdi Bayesit Mia and I'm from Bangladesh. And currently I'm studying my Bachelor of Science and I'm in my year three. And I'm doing an intensive major in molecular biology and biotechnology. And I'm also doing a minor in computer science. And so far, uh, I have done two summer research fellowships in HKU. And as of now, I am voluntarily working in Dr. Chan's lab. And lastly, I'm also a member of the Young Scientist Scheme uh, of the Faculty of Science of HKU. Thank you. So thank you, Bayesit. And how about Dr. Chan? Hi, uh, I'm Gary Chen. So I'm an assistant professor in the School of Biological Sciences. So I mainly teach uh, two subjects, the cell biology for the year one course, and also the genetics for year three course. So in my laboratory, so our research uh, topic is meant to understand how cell repair DNA damage, and also how cells separate accurately into two identical daughter cells uh, during mitosis. So, which is a very important process because if the process is not going uh, right, they have a high chance that the cell will accumulate mutation, which can lead to cancer. So, I'm uh, actually quite lucky that I'm teaching a sub uh, subjects that I'm actually researching. So, I think this is very helpful for me and also students. Yeah, thank you, Bessit and Dr. Chen. And we would really love to hear how you two work together at the laboratory. And we will definitely circle back to this later. But maybe let's start with Bayezid first. So you are a year three student, right? So it's been almost yes. three years with us. So could we actually go back to the reasons for you to choose Hong Kong U or even Hong Kong at the first place? So, uh... Yeah, Hong Kong U, I, I mean, I chose Hong Kong because Hong Kong is pretty international and I don't, I'll not have to uh, worry about the communication gaps or anything, but and Hong Kong is very diverse and it is the hub. Um, it's, I mean, I will have a lot of opportunities in Hong Kong. And I chose Hong Kong U because it is very international, the first, um, one of the main reasons. And also it's a very, I mean, it's a top quality school in the world, right? And uh, HQ Faculty of Science has uh, the professors who, who have uh, very good research and like who are doing world-class research in their laboratories. And I have always wanted to do science uh, as my undergrad, in my undergrad. And I knew that if I would come to HKU and do my bachelor's in HQ Faculty of Science, I, I will be in the right track and I will be guided by the right people. So that was one of the reasons, I mean, that was the main reason why I chose HQ Faculty of Science. Another reason was that uh, HQ actually provided me with a full scholarship. So that actually kind of took the burden of the fi uh, financial cost. So I, that was another reason I chose HQ. Yeah, we are very happy to have you here, Bezet. So um, how about the perspective as a teacher or researcher? And Dr. Shen, how do you feel about teaching science at Hong Kong U or even 
doing science in Hong Kong? Well, I think for me, because I'm originally from Hong Kong, so I, mean, I did my PhD study and also my postdoctoral study in Europe. So for me, it's very excited to uh, go back home and to able to uh, uh, teach and also to contribute myself into the uh, society of Hong Kong. So I think for, for me, Hong Kong, as uh, me has talked about before, so Hong Kong is a very international uh, city. So actually, I think no matter where you're from, so it's to communicate, to able to live or able to communicate with people around in Hong Kong is to not be a problem. So not people can able, uh, able to communicate with you in English. And particularly in the university, I think it's, we are also very uh, international and also very open uh, environment. So Hong Kong U is actually uh, really the top university in Hong Kong and also among the best in Asia. So according to some uh, survey or uh, study, so I think it's for science, so for bi biological science, we actually ran the third in Asia and number 22nd in the world. So uh, not only the rankings, I think the, uh, the teacher and the students are very high quality. They're really, uh, in the, for example, in the department of, uh, in the faculty of science or the school of biological science, students and teacher are really nothing, they, they really enjoy doing science here. And the school also provide uh, the teacher very good resources to, uh, so that they can uh, carry out their research and also their teaching. So I think this is a very uh, really nice pay for both the student and teacher to learn science or to develop their science career. So I think uh, this is uh, uh, one of the best choice I made in my life <laughs> to, to, to come back to Hong Kong. <laughs> yeah, but unlike Dr. Chen, they said you are actually relatively green in the science field, right? So um, I see you are doing a major in molecular biology and biotechnology at our faculty of science, but it's actually a pretty interesting choice to actually seeing you um, do a minor in computer science from the faculty of engineering. So could you tell us why would you have this mix and match in your study plan? Uh, it's actually because I, I want to become a researcher. I've, I mean, I, as I've already mentioned, and in this day and age, actually, the amount of data in our research, in biological sciences research is increasing exponentially. And so uh, as we go on, we need, I mean, we have to rely on computational processes more and more. So there is this new field called uh, computational biology, which is, I mean, it's not a new field. I mean, it's pretty old now, but it's becoming more and more common and more and more uh, demanding. And I feel like if I have some background in computation analysis, and if I have some background in computer science, I will, I'll, I mean, it will uh, help me become a better scientist uh, in the future. And I, I'll, I'll have a more understanding in, uh, of uh, computational biology and also bioinformatics, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so Ben said you're a very determined student, <laughs> but yeah, but it sounds a bit demanding enough to do an intensive major, as you mentioned, but is it easy to do a cross-faculty minor because the two choices of you is actually from different faculties. So is it easy or difficult to take it and credit-wise or um, workload-wise? Uh, I feel like uh, workload-wise, workload it's not that difficult as long as you have the passion for the subject, as long as you have the right minds to do, I mean, to learn about that area. It's, it's not going to be difficult, but it may be a, a little bit difficult in the third and fourth year when you are doing both like advanced courses from your field and also that field. Uh, it's, it can be a little bit difficult, but I, I don't think for me, uh, as I really want to do computer science and this one as well, it's not, uh, it, it doesn't become difficult. And in HKU, uh, the professors from the, all, all the faculties, they help a lot, and if you have any problems, you can go to the tutors, and you can ask your. Uh, I mean, you can ask them to help you, and they will help you. So I don't think it's very difficult to uh, to do a minor from another. So I think we are having.
So can you guys hear me? Testing. So I think we are having some connecting issues. We can go with this phone. Yeah. Okay, so um So Dr. Chen and Vera said, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, that's great. And we're back again. <laughs> yeah, so it's really good to hear that Vera can actually handle both fields really well. But um, actually, uh, Vera mentioned that uh, you have actually done two summer research fellowships, right? So yes. I actually had a, pre a little chat with Vera earlier, and he told me that you actually joined this uh, summer fellowship through a scheme called Young Scientist Scheme. So can you tell us more about that? Yeah, so uh, this scheme is actually every year the HQ Faculty of Science chooses few of the few of the top students from that year's batch and they admit them into this scheme called the Young Scientist Scheme, right? And uh, so every year they take in students for a YSS and I got into YSS in 2018 when I was admitted. And I, uh, I think the prime factors for that was my uh, high school academic and extracurricular records. And so, yeah, I got my uh, YSS offer along with my admissions offer. But you, I mean, you don't have to worry if you don't get into YSS with your admission. You can still get into YSS after the first year even after the second year, if you meet the CGPA criteria, the faculty will take the students who have good uh, GPA, they will enroll them into this YSS. Yeah, and is there any um, special opportunities that uh, YSS offer to students? Yes, yes, there, there are actually many uh, opportunities for this uh, scheme. For example, um, most of the students in HKU mm -hmm. who are not in YSS, they can only do one SRF throughout their studies, uh, throughout, I mean, throughout the four years of uh, bachelors, but uh, YSS students, they're guaranteed to do one SRF and they can do another SRF if they want to. And also they're guaranteed for an ORF, which is overseas research fellowship and uh, they can go to some other countries like uh, 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 England and like Singapore and other countries to do their research in, uh, to do a summer research there. And also uh, the criteria for YSS is actually pretty high. So most of the students who, who are into who are in YSS, mm -hmm. they will also get some entrance scholarship. And I think for the most important thing is that like uh, the YSS students uh, get some special mentorship from their mentors, which are assigned to them in first year. They, they will guide them for research and other, uh, other uh, queries if they have any. And also the YSS students are given uh, priorities during exchange, uh, during exchange uh, applications. For example, they will be put in, uh, I mean, they, they, will give, they will be given uh, more priority for the YSS, uh, I mean, the exchange opportunity. And also uh, for the YSA students, they get some uh, opportunities uh, and like they, they get some guided tours for the SRF and ORF poster presentation where, the, where there are some uh, peer, I mean, peer leaders who will help them and who will help them understand the posters of the seniors who have done the research earlier in the summer. Uh, yeah, that is, uh, I mean, that, those, those are uh, like few of the opportunities that you get if you're in YSA. Yeah, and I can see that Beza actually gave me some pictures earlier, and we have three lovely pictures here. So Beza, do you, uh, can you share with us some uh, memorable moments of you? Because we see you're doing different things. Is that you doing the poster presentation in the right hand side? Yeah, yeah, that was uh, <laughs> that was my poster presentation from my first year, first SRF, and I was explaining my uh, summer research to the first, I mean, to one of the year one students who was a fresh, I mean, freshman, I think, yeah. 
So, and like I, the, both my SRFs were actually very fruitful and my YSS gatherings where I met with the seniors and they told me about their studies and like the, how they, uh, I mean, how they have been studying in HKU and it was, I mean, the meetings were pretty good. And I also remember we had a, a luncheon with the professors where one of the professors from HQ uh, School of Biological Sciences. He was talking about his postgraduate studies and his undergrad studies, and he was like, uh, he was telling us that you can you can do uh, a lot of stuff if you study in HKU, and the opportunities are there. You just have to go and grab them. And uh, also, like I, in my two uh, SRS, I worked with uh, two different professors. I, I'm now working with Dr. Chan, and till now, I think my experience has been very fruitful in the in, in in both both the labs yeah i think it's very impressive for a year three student to have done so many different researches and have so many different experiences and as a non-science person myself and maybe as a student from high school um, we actually do not have much information or idea on how students actually work on the summer research fellowship and what exactly do students need to do or what are their roles in the fellowship. So could you tell us a bit more on the roles of students or what exactly do they need to do? Uh, for the SRS, what happens is the, uh, uh, you, have, you first have to approach a professor and get the recommendation from the professor. And if the professor, I mean, so you have to show your interest and you have to show your CV to them. And if they're interested, I mean, if they like your CV, they will write the recommendation letter. And the professor, uh, the supervisor will have a project for the student for the summer. And he, I mean, he or she will guide the, guide the student in the summer. And then like the student has to complete the project and then uh, and then uh, after the summer research fellowship is complete, they have to uh, provide a poster presentation uh, in, during the semester. So yeah, so that is, uh, I mean, that's, I think the gist of SRS. And Dr. Chen, is the project self-financed for the students or is there any financial assistance or subsidy from the faculty itself? Yes, yes, yes. Actually for every, uh, Students that complete the program, they will get a one. Uh, so the lab will get a one sixteen hundred, uh, so sixteen thousand Hong Kong dollar, which is mainly for the uh, you know, for the course of the 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 the, the project. So I think it's uh, uh, the student doesn't need to, uh, uh, pay anything. So this is uh, complete for free. <laughs> so I think the the the, the in, in this in this regard, the faculty is quite supportive for the undergraduate research. That's really good to hear because I think if Jin do not have to worry about the money issue, that would be such an incentive for them to pursue their study and research. And maybe let's get into some dynamics between you two because we have to bring back some memories. Um, you mentioned Dr. Chan is your supervisor, right? So may I know how did he exactly support you or helped you throughout the whole fellowship program? So uh, Dr. Chan has been uh, very supportive in my during my SRS. Uh, so like before I started my project, he explained to me like what my project is going to be about, and he also suggested to read some papers uh, on that topic, and so that I could understand the research better. And also he also suggested me to get in, I mean get more in depth knowledge about some uh, topics, which will, which will also help me for the project. And also like every step of the uh, fellowship, uh, whenever we were doing a new experiment and, and a new step, he would explain, me, explain to us, uh, to me, like why we were doing that uh, step. And what, I, mean, what, I mean, what we expect to see from that step. And also uh, uh, Dr. Chan linked me up with one of his PhD candidates so that I could observe her doing the experiments first and then I, do, I could do them by myself. And also I could talk, I can ask, I could ask her like any instant questions I have on experimental protocols and principles. So, uh, so in, in Dr. Chan's lab, I actually learned a lot about the research methodologies and the, yeah, and the techniques. I, I, I also developed my skills there. So yeah, so it has been uh, a blessing for me kind of, yes. <laughs> so I guess it's really important to have someone to guide you through 
the rationale behind every step you yeah. make during the research. Yeah. And you're now still working at Dr. Chen's lab, right? So yes. is there any reason for you to keep working in the lab? And Dr. Chen, how how does Bear perform yeah, at your lab? Is he a good student or working partner? Well, let me answer first. Well, you know, you, he's still working in my lab. This is already the answer, right? Eh? Of course, he's doing <laughs> well. That's why I try to keep him. So I think, you know, uh, project, the research project in uh, biological science cannot finish in one summer. So this is obvious. So uh, uh, to answer a biological question, a specific biological question, the extensive amount of uh, work. So a summer uh, research program is more like for students to learn some technique or get into the knowledge of the project. So if a student uh, develop interest during this summer, and the portrait is going well. So of course, it's happy for all of us to continue. And actually, uh, because uh, Mia is a year fee student, so uh, it's, not, it's very likely that the portrait that he's doing, starting from the summer, will develop into his, uh, become his final year portrait. So I think, uh, I, I would say it's very likely that uh, the, the, because he's very hardworking and the portrait is going well, so very likely that it will end up to some good product. So at the end, it's like a uh, publication. So I, for me, I'm very happy that uh, Mia uh, continues to stay in my lab to, to work. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think I was grown up. So just like Dr. Chan said, I also like enjoyed the project very much and it was not uh, complete. So I wanted to, uh, like I, I like the research topic so much and also the methodology and the environment in the lab of Dr. Chan so much that I wanted to continue being a part of it. So, and uh, I, yeah, I, if I can, I mean, I also plan to do my uh, final year project in Dr. Chan's lab so that I can continue this uh, project. And like in that process, I believe like I will have more experience and I will also develop my, I mean, I'll improve my skill set that I already have. And I've like, I learned a lot of, uh, extra, I mean, a lot of more experimental uh, procedures and uh, new experimental procedures. And also, I think uh, throughout this process, if I can continue working in Dr. Chan's lab, I'll, I, I get to uh, make a better connection with Dr. Chan. And also, I can take some advice from him for like postgraduate studies and career planning as well. Yeah, it seems to me that like having a working lab experience is very exclusive to undergraduate students. So Dr. Chen, is it common for science students to have um, lab experience when they are still an undergraduate? And how can they benefit from it if they have that experience? Uh, yes, actually, I think a student, uh, undergraduate science student in Hong Kong, they're quite keen on doing research. So actually starting from year two or uh, the first semester of year three, so many of the students, they will approach uh, the professor to see whether they can do an internship or help, uh, be a student helper in the lab to get some experience. So many, I think many uh, professor or PI, they are quite welcome the student to come to uh, learn. And also, of course, they will also provide the work uh, manpower for the lab. So I think it's actually quite important for students to, to get some experience. Because I would say in, in Hong Kong, you uh, faculty of science uh, student, so they can choose to do a five year project or do an internship or do a, a you know, project study. So they're not necessarily, they're not forced to only do research or forced to only do internship. So actually quite good for them, quite important for them at least to uh, get some experience or get some feeling whether uh, research are really, uh, research in that project are really for them. Because there are also other options, they can do. Uh, they can become uh, working in the industry. They can become other working in other set sector. But my feeling is, uh, many of the students they would like to explore to research first, at least to get some experience, and also uh, to to develop interest. So I think uh, I have also other than me, I also have holds uh, two or three more undergraduate students. So I think they, 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 they also, well, not all of them, honestly, not all of them will end up saying that they are interested, very interested in science and continue. 
that is uh, uh, but I think many of them they they would like to stay longer and more so explore more uh, to explore more technique and more experience in doing research and not only for the five year projects I think it's also for them to to this this decide whether they want to do a postgraduate study on research in the future. So I think many uh, undergraduate students are very keen on getting some experience in the uh, undergraduate study uh, during the undergraduate study to do uh, some research. So I think it's good for them. Also good for the lab because they will get some uh, manpower to that they can uh, more more research can be done. Yeah, Dr. Chen actually mentions internships because it might be a major concern of students for them to gain first-hand experience and actually is a really good opportunity for them to know that if science really their real interest and um, actually from your knowledge, Dr. Chen, where do science students usually take up their internships? Like, are there any examples to have us a glimpse of look for students to know actually where are they going to? So they, they, they have many choices. So actually you can also do an internship in a research lab. So for example, you can go to other department. So if the, uh, if the uh, other faculty, for example, medicine, if they are doing more uh, applied or uh, uh, translational research, so you can do an internship in a uh, mm -hmm. medical lab or in a uh, you know, more applied science lab. So they're also students. I, I heard they do internship in, in private uh, startup or biotechnology company. So I think they, they are uh, 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 some program for, for students they to try to kind of you know, matching to, to get some uh, internship opportunity there outside the Hong Kong U. Yeah, and you mentioned there are actually many other options for science students other than doing research. So um, ex um, what exactly are those industries are students going into apart from doing a researcher? Well, uh, 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 I don't really have an exact list, but I know that for for uh, for our graduates, so our one, so our uh, employment rate is very high. So I think ninety five percent of the the, the graduate stu undergraduate students after finish their program can get employed or they go further study. So I think around 20, 20 25 percent of the students will go to further study. So for the uh, student that become a uh, 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 full time. Uh, employ, em, employee in other sector, they can, it's very wide range, so it's not really restricted to uh, science. They can also become a uh, business or industry. So for example, they can go to uh, any, uh, you know, any set of the business, any set of the industry. Education, for example, they can become a, a, a science teacher in high school or other, other, other school. They also a significant percent, I think 20% become a community or social uh, science worker. Also around 5% to civil surf surface. So I think uh, the, the option for, 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 for our graduate students uh, are very wide. So it's not limited to science, but if they are interested in, in, in research, so there are also a good percentage of people will, will further study, to continue study in a graduate school. Yeah, thank you Dr. Chen for the numbers. And I see there are actually many choices for science students to do, even after graduation. And um, I, uh, Mia, based on your background and knowledge as an international student from Bangladesh and studying in Hong Kong, do you have a career plan in mind for now? Or where do you plan to go or do after graduation? Actually, I have a, I mean, I have a big plan in my mind now that I, I mean, after I finish my undergrad, I want to pursue my postgraduate studies because uh, I want to pursue uh, being, I mean, pursue the career of being a researcher one day. And uh, like after I complete my postgraduate studies, I'll probably do some postdoctoral studies. And then uh, my final plan is to become, I mean, is to work in academia. And so like, but I still have not decided where I will be like going for postgraduate but H2 is one of my top priorities because I've already settled here. I mean, I've already been here for a long time, almost three years now. And I think if I continue staying in HVU, I'll, I'll be more familiar with the system. So I'll probably study my postgraduate studies in HQ and then like go on to some other countries because HQ's research is pretty international. I mean, it's very international and also like world class. 
So I can go anywhere with my research and my skill sets. Yeah. Yeah, and speaking of career prospect, maybe let me raise a very realistic concern of students, maybe, because we all know it's a pretty challenging year. Like we have the pandemic and the COVID and stuff. And how do you see the career prospect actually in Asia or in Hong Kong or even around the world as a researcher or a people from uh, science field. Is it optimistic? Wow, uh, this is a tough question. So no one know what happened, how, yeah, when the sure. pandemic will end. But I would say it's also give us some a hint about what, how, how should we, how the science students equip themselves. So I, I think some, something we learn, learn in this pandemic is, uh, so we need to be prepared. So this yeah. thing can happen. So for the skill of uh, uh, able to communicate with uh, other people through uh, internet or through uh, you know this kind of uh, e-platform is become an essential skill. And also I think that uh, maybe, uh, for example, people now also understand that it's quite important to, 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 to have uh, developed some innovative uh, research in local. Because uh, you, you know that in this pandemic, uh, we need a lot of new portal that help fight, fighting the virus or fighting the pandemics have arrived very quickly. So I think this really, uh, uh, is, it really depends people whether they, they're prepared for, for the challenge to come. Not only waiting when the challenge arrives and then they, they figure out how to do. So I, I, I think for, for science students, because they have the knowledge, so after the undergraduate, they have the, the study, they have the knowledge. So I, I'm sure that they, they will do well in, the, in, in these uh, difficult years. So I think the more important to, 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 for them is to try to uh, equip themselves with multiple uh, skills. So you should be good at something that you're very good at, it's not your main subjects. But also like me, uh, so he's doing a, a, a computer science uh, minor. So he will have extra skill for, for, for a computer. So I think that is uh, very good for him. Maybe he will use this skill in the future to fighting uh, another challenge in the future. So I think I, I'm, 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 I'm quite confident that the, the education program that provided by the Hong Kong U uh, Faculty of Science is to be prepare the student uh, to able to face a different type of challenge. Yeah, sure. And as a academic staff from Hong Kong U, um, what do you think are the qualities do the faculty look for in applicants? Well, uh, I think, of course, for uh, the faculty, the, the, the university, we look for students that are hardworking, they have passion for science, and they're able, able to motivate themselves to, to self-learning. Because in this period of time, many uh, courses is move online. So people attend uh, online lecture or they study the video uh, lecture video later. So if a student is not motivated enough to learn themselves or have a discipline to able to stick to the uh, online schedule. So it's unlike the traditional teaching that the teacher is in the classroom to, to guide the student, right? So it's very important that the student able to uh, motivate themselves to be disciplined enough to, to follow the teaching at the learning schedule. And also important to have good time management. I would say the coursework for in Hong Kong U uh, science program are quite tough, particularly in the advanced level. Now in year three, year four. So you can, me, I can talk about whether, how you feel about the, the, the pace of the courses, but I, I, my, I would say it's quite intense, particularly in year three and year four. So uh, good time management is also very important. Yeah, I, I think yeah. it, it, is, it is very true that the year three and year four courses are like they require you to uh, do up. I mean, much. I mean, they require you to put in more hours into the uh, syllabus because uh, in, in, um, every class will cover a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, topics. And uh, if you don't study when the lectures are, I mean, when, when the lectures were recorded, then the the, all the things will pile up and you have to do all of them before the exam, which is not possible, right? So 
I think time, like Dr. Chan mentioned, I think time management is very key issue in the later years, something I mean, year three and year four. And if you cannot manage time very well, then you'll probably face some problems during the exams. Yeah, and thank you so much for having a chat with us, Mia and Dr. Chen. And we can see that we already have many comments and questions rolling in. And I will now uh, try to give you some program and admissions information before we address those questions to Mia and Dr. Chen. So as mentioned, there are actually many articulation pathways and that Hong Kong you support uh, outstanding science students and at Hong Kong we have the science taught postgraduate program at Hong Kong U and upon a successful completion in five or five and a half years um, student will be obtain a bachelor degree plus a master degree in certain fields and if you are looking for some overseas opportunities uh, we do collaborate uh, with different prestigious universities outside Hong Kong. And for example, the University of Melbourne and the University of Northeastern University in Boston. And you can study different uh, postgraduate degree there through the collaboration program. And for this year, um, I actually want to present you with our newly launched program, which is a science masterclass. This is available for direct enrollment. And if you are a science inclined student who wish to complete two degrees at an accelerated pace, this program might be your choice because you will be gaining a bachelor degree in science and a master degree in research. And you will have the academic advice and special tutorials from our masters and grandmasters. And you will be having lessons of postgraduate level, which will enhance your students' uh, frontier scientific knowledge and research skills. And just like Mia, uh, the students from the science masterclass will actually be part of the YSS scheme. So you will have various uh, opportunities, maybe like a summer research fellowship and overseas research fellowship and different exchange study and scholarship opportunities. And now, actually, we are actually uh, inviting the applications from different students from different backgrounds, actually. And we welcome our students from abroad to apply to us through the international uh, qualifications like IB, GCEA level, they all will do. And um, at this stage, the applications uh, would be reviewed on a rolling basis subject to program availability. So we advise keen applicants to apply uh, early. And there is a full list of our reference score, uh, which is also called the expected lower boundary, which is available on our website. So if you want to know if the Bachelor of Science or other programs is within your reasonable reach, you are very welcome to check on that list on our website. And we do have some program specific requirements. Uh, for example, for Bachelor uh, of Science, you will have to apply with uh, either physics, biology, or chemistry or mathematics. So different programs have different program specific requirements. And if you're interested, you can also check on our website. And applying to Hong Kong U, you will need to apply through uh, the language requirements, you need to fulfill that. So other than English proficiency, we do require applicants to apply with a second language proficiency proof. It does not have to be Cantonese, it does not have to be Chinese. Uh, you can apply with like, um, actually any other second language other than English because the medium of instruction at Hong Kong U is English. So it's perfectly fine if you don't know a word of Chinese, you can still study here. So I think that's all for the program information and we will go to the Q&A session. So let me address some questions from the comment box to Dr. Chan and Mia. So I see um, someone ask that, how is the learning method in Hong Kong U, especially for the molecular biology and biotechnology? Is it dominated by learning the theory or is it learning by doing? 
So maybe Dr. Chen and Mia can help answer this question for Michelle. Oh, for uh, basic courses in year one, so many of them mainly lecture and tutorial because at the beginning you need to have some basic knowledge before you can able to do anything, right? I think starting from year two or year three, uh, year two courses, so level two or level three courses, so many of the courses actually you need to do a practical session. So actually substantial amount of time you need to spend in the lab, the teaching lab. So for example, the courses, uh, the course genetics that I teach, so we have 24 hour of uh, 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 lecture and 24 hour of uh, lab session. So you need to do a real uh, research in the uh, teaching lab, as so, an uh, experiment in the teaching lab and hand in the uh, lab report. So I would say in Hong Kong New, uh, the science, there really a lot of uh, uh, practical session you need to attend. So we don't, you not only need to learn or understand the theory, and you also need to have a, a lot of uh, uh, experience on the research, uh, uh, experience on the experiment. So that prepare for you to able to do your own research in the future. So I will say uh, in Hong Kong, you, yes, both you need to learn from both theory and hand on exp uh, experience on uh, doing exper experiment. Yeah, and I, I think it also answered the questions of other students asking on theory or practical issues. So one student asked about the requirement of computer science. Um, maybe I think uh, Mia can also share about his experience on his study in computer science, maybe. Yeah, uh, for the computer science courses, uh, it's, uh, I mean, computer science is more like practical based. I mean, theory mm. is, uh, I mean, you also have theory. If you don't have the theory, you cannot do practical uh, stuff. But I think in computer science courses, the assignments they give you and also the tutorials they have, they're more practical based. Like they prepare you for like the uh, real life uh, situation. Then you have to do the experiments, I mean, do the sorry, uh, assignments, which, uh, which are more practical based. So I, I'll say like, even for the computer science courses, it's similar to biological sciences. Like you also have a lot of practical experiments uh, along with the theory, because without the theory, we cannot do practical stuff. So, so they teach you the theory and then the, they ask you practical questions in computer science courses as well. Yeah. And there is also questions asking about um, exchange opportunities. Yes, um, Hong Kong U does offer many uh, exchange opportunities. Um, for Hong Kong U students in general, we do offer um, Hong Kong U worldwide exchange scheme for students to apply to different universities outside Hong Kong. And, and in this YSS scheme, there are also many different uh, overseas um, opportunities for students to do their internships or even their research projects. So there are many opportunities for students to go outside Hong Kong and explore worldwide. So, and there is also a question on, again, the study mode in Hong Kong U. Is it mainly self-studying after lecturing or is it more lecture-based teaching? Well, uh, uh... I would say so in lectures, so of course, the teacher try to defer the, the, the knowledge. So the student mainly just listening and, and taking a look. But uh, in the uh, science, I think we also have a lot of tutorial uh, courses that we discuss a question. So that like, uh, uh, so more exercise or more ex example will be given. So that can people can prepare for the, so to try to apply their knowledge. So I think it's not main, it's not only we really need just you need to, uh, the student just uh, listen to lecture. I think they also need to have uh, the practical skill. They also need to really able to use the knowledge to answer some uh, scenario question. So in the so so the the, the three element in in a in a course is to be the lecture, the tutorial, and the laboratory. So many courses in the science in Hong Kong you have three, this three element. Actually, it's a kind of our teaching uh, objective or teaching outcome requirement is that we should provide students with uh, lecture, a tutorial and practical session. Yeah, and I've got some questions on specific score required. 
And I think um, students who are interested in applying to our programs can actually check on our website for a detailed list on different uh, reference score that you can benchmark yourself against it. So um, there is a list showing different international qualification score like GCE or IB, and you can check on that. And there are some questions asking regarding the student life at Hong Kong U. So someone asked that how much time do you spend in total in a day doing research studies and YSS and how hectic is it? <laughs> Maybe Mia can share with us on that. Uh, I think, uh, I mean, you don't have to do research studies when you are in, uh, when you are, uh, I mean, you are doing, I mean, during the semester, you don't have to do research. Actually, it's more dependent on you. Like if you want to volunteer in a lab, you can do it. But during your semester, you don't have to go to a lab. But I think when you do FYP, you don't have to spend uh, like around uh, two, three hours every day in lab. I mean, it's not like, uh, it's not something like uh, that's very, rag I mean, mandatorily you have, I mean, it's not like you have to spend mandatorily three hours in the lab. Depending on the experiments you have, you may go there and do the experiments and then leave or you may stay there. But during the semester, if you are not doing your final year project, you don't have to work in a lab. So there is no pressure from HKU to do research during the semester. Yeah, and yeah. I see the audience are quite curious about your study life because I have some questions on the biggest obstacle you had to overcome in research. Maybe Dr. Chen and Mia can also take on that as well. Like the obstacles and difficulties that students may encounter during the research progress? Well, uh, it's to get good results. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I, 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 to be real, research is not easy. So people are still don't need to, especially new students that is not very experienced. They need to spend time. And most likely at the first few weeks or few months, mm. they are just repeating a certain experiment because uh, they just not have a good enough skill or uh, experience to, to get good results. Even they get some results, they probably need to repeat in order to get a better result. So I, I think at some point can be frustrated. But once you, you start getting what you expected to see or uh, start solving some question, you get you some motivation and get some positive feedback so you will be, uh, start enjoying doing it. So I hope that's what me are fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I think, yeah, uh, I, I still remember in my first SRF, I had to spend like one month doing a simple task. Like I had to prepare a DNA and we had, to, I mean, I had to spend around like three weeks to do that. And at some point it tested my nerves. Like I became, I mean, it, it was very frustrating, but yeah, the key is to not lose patience and you have to stick to it. And, and I think if you have the passion for it, you will stick to it. So. Sure. But once you get the good results, it's actually very full, um, fulfilling. It's, it's, it's very satisfactory as well. Yeah, I guess science is a very result-driven task for all, all of us. Yeah. And under the current pandemic situation, um, someone asked that did most of the international students um, have face-to-face -face classes or most of them still stay at home? So uh, I, okay, maybe uh, I say something first. Because I think in, in fact, the science, there are guidelines that for big, big classes, that means class more than 90 people, they have to be all online. So for this, uh, for the current situation. So also for the, uh, for this semester. So I don't know what happened will be for the uh, next year because uh, the situation is still uh, uh, developing. So we, I can't tell you whether it will be a face-to-face -face or a, a pure online. But if the situation do not allow a face-to-face -face due to uh, the, the pandemics or still to the travel ban or the border control, so very likely that the faculty will still continue the uh, online uh, lecture policy. So I think even if you're an international student, you cannot uh, go to Hong Kong on time because of the uh, travel control or border control. Still, the most of the uh, lectures should be still delivered uh, by wow, uh, online platform. 
So I think this will be fine. So the only problem is sometimes some courses need to be uh, have a practical session. So as I mentioned before, this mainly happen in the higher level classes, like in the, in the, at least in the year two or year three. So I think if in year one, most of courses is mainly natural and tutorial, which can be conducted fully online. Yeah, and I've got some questions on, Dr. Chen mentioned graduates go to private sectors and in different industries. What exactly are they? Well, you know, this video, uh, I, I think you can go to private sector, mean you can go to any uh, private company. So you can apply the job as, uh, 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 as uh, like other uh, graduate. Because I think science skill is, doesn't need to be very, uh, science skill doesn't need to be restricted to only uh, science related uh, sector. And other commonly people, uh, if you still want to stay in uh, research or uh, related set, uh, sector, I think uh, in for example in the science is that called the Hong Kong Science Park in Satin. So I think in, in we have some uh, area. In Hong Kong, that is particular for uh, about small biotechnology startup company. But I think they hire quite a lot of uh, 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 graduation from uh, uh, undergraduate student and also postgraduate student. So if you want to be, be a research assistant in a, a, a biotechnology startup, so you can actually there, there's some opportunity in Hong Kong. But I would say for uh, student from science can actually apply any sector. Because the skill is the general skill. You, you get training to become a, a student, that become a empo future employee that able to face different type of challenge. Right? So it's not only doing science. So you can be any professional you want in the future. And someone asked, do you suggest, uh, do you suggest students to head on for overseas internships or exchange on the current situation of the COVID-19 pandemic. So maybe the student is asking about, do you suggest they still go for overseas opportunities or should they um, stay in Hong Kong to look for the local opportunities? Uh, I, well, it really depends on the situation because uh, uh, it's, very, it's very difficult to say, depending on where you want to go, right? So if, if you go to an area that have the highest number of uh, incident of uh, COVID, I, I would say maybe you think about it. But uh, uh, I think if you are able to organize the travel and you, you are able to be sure that you're able to, 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 to uh, live there properly, I, I think you can. But I would say in Hong Kong, you also have a lot of opportunity. So, uh, uh, May be better to also consider the local option first in this uh, situation. Yeah, I think our time is running short, so I will pick some of the questions here. So I think there are some uh, questions keep asking on the face-to-face -face lessons and the online Zoom lessons, the study mm. mode regarding the study mode. So maybe I think Mia can share about how do you feel living in Hong Kong during the pandemic in the recent years or the recent months and how the situation and how does it really affect your daily life here? Is it okay for you to stay here? Maybe you can share a bit on that with our students. Yeah, I think the past month has, I mean, the past few months have been a little different, but I don't think my life has been like my, I mean, it's, it's, it's been more, more or less the same as before, just that we, I have to maintain some more protocols, like, uh, uh, like I have to wear the mask all the time. That's okay for me. I don't mind that because as long as I'm safe, if I wear the mask, then it's okay. But other than that, I don't think a lot of stuff, a lot of, a lot of things in H Hong Kong has changed. For example, like everything is still open. Like when I back in my country, everything was in was under a lockdown. So when I came back to Hong Kong, it was actually more free in here, and like I could do more stuff in here than back in Bangladesh. Bangladesh, like I. I mean, it was under a lockdown, so I had to stay at home. But in Hong Kong, I mean, I still could go to restaurants. I still could meet my friends and I still could go, I mean, come to the lab and do my internship there. So 
I think in my life in Hong Kong has not changed that much. I feel it's more or less the same. Just a few more uh, procedure, a um, few more precautions like wearing the mask and like sanitizing your hands every now and then. So yeah. Yeah. So maybe we still get a few questions, and we I've got some private message questions too, and. Someone asked Dr. Chen about your teaching history at Hong Kong U, and he wants you to share your experience and your feelings about teaching at Hong Kong U because he knows that you have a you study your PhD in Switzerland, right? Is it correct? Uh, yes, yes. How yes, do you yes. feel about? Um, Doing a science in Switzerland and Hong Kong, and he asked about the comparison of the two mm. different countries regarding science. I think that's a pretty inter interesting question. Well, uh, so of, of course, Switzerland and, and Hong Kong is quite different uh, city. So I, I stay in Basel, so it's a very different city. But I would say, if you working in lab, may not be that different. So I would say, uh, as I mentioned before, the Hong Kong is a very, also very, very international uh, city. And in terms of doing research, so I think the, the way of we doing research, the way we organize, the people organize the laboratory are more or less similar. So actually people, they work in uh, Hong Kong at their, uh, their master or PhD, and then go to foreign country like uh, Europe or US for their uh, postdoc. They actually also feel that this, transition do not have much uh, difficulty because I think the, the laboratory setup or uh, the mindset of people doing, uh, doing research are quite similar. So I actually think if you in the future thinking about doing uh, 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 going to a graduate school in overseas, in Europe or US, so getting some experience in, Ho uh, in Hong Kong, in the laboratory of Hong Kong will help. So actually you prepare yourself uh, for a future uh, challenge in uh, other country. So I think for, for teaching, so I, I think uh, I actually, this, this is actually my, the, I'm starting my third year in Hong Kong U, so I don't have a lot of teaching experience yet, but I do teach a few uh, courses in level uh, year one and also year four, year three student. So I think it's, it's quite different because uh, in year one courses, uh, I need to face to a large number of people. So the course that I teach uh, in the basic cell biology have 200 people. So uh, if I conduct tutorial, I will have a situation similar to the day that I have a ton of questions. So a lot of students are very keen of asking questions. So you need to be patient because if you miss some of the questions, they, they will, some students can be angry and ask you email, ask you question in email. So I, I well, not angry, but they just really want to get the answer. But I think students in P, uh, in Hong Kong, they are really quite keen on learning. So they they quite ask quite a lot of questions in tutorial. They're really quite uh, hard, working quite hard because uh, they get quite high score in in the exam. So for a teacher, I think this also motivate me to actually give a better lecture to the improve. So actually, every year I will modify my uh, nature a little bit because things have changed. Right? We have more new knowledge about why every year. So I need to uh, adjust my, my uh, uh, teaching material. So for a higher level courses, like year three courses that I teach in genetics, I think now in the, then the focus will be more on prepare students to become a researcher. So you not only keep uh, basic knowledge to the student, so you also need to prepare themselves for uh, doing more uh, ex experiment. So you have to have a practical session well organized. And also you have to start teaching people as students to read uh, research paper. So I think this is uh, reading a textbook and reading a research paper are uh, quite different, right? It requires different type of uh, intention. So I, I, I think uh, I, I will say the program of uh, uh, the undergraduate program or in faculty of science, they're really quite well organized. They know what the student in different stages need. So at the beginning, they need basic knowledge. So the course is uh, 
decided to deliver as uh, more knowledge, mm. basic knowledge as possible. Then when the student uh, go move to year two, year three, or year four, then the program know that uh, now we need to give students more practical information or more practical knowledge rather than a basic theory. So they need to be more able to sell learn. So they need to have more sales study, more project based uh, uh, question, or more project based uh, study mode. So I think this is, uh, I'm actually also learning how to teach better. So, but I would say uh, uh, the whole uh, idea of how they train an undergraduate student in this four year are quite well organized. So I'm enjoying teaching here and I also hope my students enjoying uh, my teaching. And I'm sure that uh, if you are interested in science, Hong Kong U will be uh, a good choice for you. Yeah, that's very good to hear. And maybe I will take the last questions from here. So someone asked about the percentage of local and international students in the major. I can't really give an exact number here, but I think Mia may have something to share regarding how you get along with the local and being an international student in Hong Kong at Hong Kong. Maybe you can share a bit on your student life, getting along with the local. Yeah, I mean, first of all, in uh, my faculty, like the number of uh, the percentage of international students is pretty high, actually. Like, uh, like where, where, I mean, wh whichever class I am in, I'll always find uh, a lot of international students in there. And even, um, I mean, you don't have to find the international students because most of the time you cannot say the difference between an international student and a local student because they all speak English and they all speak I mean, fluent English. So it's not, it's not like very different. Uh, like even the local, I mean, you cannot differentiate between the local and the international students just by like talking to them. You may have to ask them like where you come from and all, right? So for me, I think uh, getting along with the local students is not a problem at all in, in like almost all the time, yeah. And, but we do have a lot of international students as well in, the, in, in our faculty, in my major as well. Yeah, so. I think we still have many questions regarding the scholarship and the financial assistance, but I'm afraid that we cannot take it here. But I would suggest you all who are interested in the scholarship and financial subsidies or assistance at Hong Kong U, you can actually join our next session about Hong Kong U scholarship information. And you can actually um, register online and the session would be held on the 27th this month, also from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. So for those of you uh, international students who are interested in finding out more details of the financial issues or about the scholarships available at Hong Kong U or in Hong Kong, you're welcome to join this session. And actually we invited two current students uh, from different countries and they may have something to share regarding the scholarship experience or the application procedures they encountered and you will have some insights on that hopefully. So uh, I think that's pretty much all for today.